Welcome everyone to part three of What Design for Bending, presented on behalf of ThinkRick Australia. So just some background information before we begin. This is the third part to the Water Design for Bending series, covering two-way bending. This presentation will go through relevant standards such as AS3700 masonry structures and outline the design considerations for two-way bending. This presentation will also go through a worked example for a brick wall. Robustness is considered as a factor that ensures serviceability of the masonry under construction. Walls shall be designed to resist a minimum, uniformly distributed, out-of-plane loading of 0.5 kPa. For load-bearing members, vertical loads applied to the top of the wall shall be ignored when determining its robustness. An unreinforced brick wall shall be designed to withstand two-way bending forces from short-term actions such as out-of-plane wind loads or earthquake loads. Walls that are supported on at least one vertical and one horizontal edge shall be designed for two-way bending. Here are some other design requirements. The walls shall be a single leaf, solid construction, or cavity wall construction with each leaf of the cavity wall being a single leaf or solid construction. Construction and detailing of the wall for development of two-way bending strength capacity must be satisfied within the four edges of the rectangular panel. The figures below represent a single leaf, solid construction, and cavity wall. Two-way bending considers diagonal cracking of the wall that occurs when using the support configurations as mentioned previously. Some typical failure patterns for two-way bending are provided below. From the previous presentations on wall design for bending, you should be familiar with the minimum design compressive stress on bed joints, FD. The value shall be determined resulting from the minimum design compressive force at the bed joint under consideration and the design cross-sectional area of the bed joint. Factors such as the wall's self-weight and other dead loads such as slabs or roof trusses shall be considered when determining the minimum design compressive stress. If the top of the wall is not laterally supported, the design compressive stress, FD, is at the top of the wall. This is shown in figure A. If the top of the wall is laterally supported, the design compressive stress, FD, is at a distance equal to half the height of the wall below its top lateral support. This is shown in figure B. The total design pressure, WD, shall be less than the two-way bending capacity of the wall, W. The two-way bending capacity of the wall is calculated using the equation below, where W is the two-way bending capacity of the wall, AF, K1 and K2 is the aspect factor and coefficients respectively, LD, which is the design length of the wall, MCH, which is the horizontal bending capacity, and finally MCD, which is the diagonal bending capacity. Table 7.5 of AS3700 is used to derive the aspect factors and coefficients K1 and K2, where alpha is the slope factor, LD, which is the design length of the wall, HD, which is the design height of the wall, RF1, which is the restraint factor for the first supported edge of the wall, RF2, which is the restraint factor for the second supported edge of the wall, G, which is the assumed slope of the crack line, HU, which is the height of the masonry unit, TJ, which is the mortar joint thickness, and finally, LU which is the length of the masonry unit. Here is a diagram of the different configurations of supports for walls. The design height and design length shall be chosen appropriately for the following cases. If the wall is supported on only one side, as shown in figure A and C, the full height or length of the wall shall be used. If the wall is supported on both sides, as shown in figure B and D, half the height or length of the wall shall be used. Here is a diagram of the different cases for restraint factors. For corners, the restraint factor is 1. For control joints, the restraint factor ranges between 0 and 1. For free ends, the restraint factor is 0. The horizontal bending capacity, MCH, shall be taken as the least of the three equations shown, where phi is a capacity reduction factor, KP is a perpend spacing factor, F-MT is a characteristic flexural tensile strength of the masonry. ZD 
is the section modulus of the bedded area, FD, which is the compressive stress on the bed joints, F-UT, which is the lateral modulus of rupture, ZU, which is the section modulus of the units, and finally, ZP, which is the section modulus of the perpens. The diagonal bending capacity, MCD, is calculated using the equation below, where 5 is the capacity reduction factor for the unreinforced masonry in flexure, F-T, which is the equivalent characteristic torsional strength, and finally, ZT, which is the equivalent torsional section modulus. The torsional strength, F-T, is calculated using the equation below, where F-MT is the characteristic flexural tensile strength of the unreinforced concrete, and FD, which is the compressive stress on the bed joints. The equivalent torsional section modulus, ZT, is calculated using the equations below. Solid rectangular section and hollow section equations shall be used appropriately, where B is the height factor, TU is the width of the masonry unit, LU, which is the length of the masonry unit, HU, which is the height of the masonry unit, TJ, which is the mortar joint thickness, TS, which is the thickness of the face shell at its thinnest point, and finally, G, which is the assumed slope of the crack line. Brick units are typically treated as a solid rectangular section. We will now go through a worked example on how to determine the two-way bending capacity for an unreinforced brick wall. This example requires us to design a wall with a total out-of-plane loading of 1.5 kPa. The wall is 2.7 meters high, made of standard brick units, using full bedding of M3 mortar. The wall spans horizontally at 2.4 meters and is supported on all four sides. We will determine the two-way bending capacity of the wall and check whether it is greater than the design loading. Using a standard brick size, the crack slope and slope factor is calculated. Both horizontal edges are laterally supported and thus we use half the actual height. Both vertical edges are laterally supported and thus we use half the actual length. The crack slope is calculated to be 0.717 and the slope factor is calculated to be 0.64. Using table 7.5 of AS3700, the aspect factor AF may be calculated. Both vertical edges are simply supported and the slope factor alpha was calculated to be less than one. For conservative design, we assume no rotational support Therefore, RF1 and RF2 is zero. The aspect factor is calculated to be 1.27 and the coefficients K1 and K2 are calculated to be 0.36 and 1.88 respectively. The torsional strength equation is a function of the flexural tensile strength of the masonry and the minimum design compressive stress on the bed joint, which is calculated to be 1.01 megapascals. The horizontal bending capacity of the wall was calculated to be 0.56 kN meters, which can be found in the wall design for bending part one presentation, one way horizontal bending. A detailed explanation of the steps involved for calculating the horizontal bending capacity can be found in the description. Here, we determine the torsional section modulus. Using the crack slope and brick unit dimensions, we find that the height factor is 69.9 millimeters. As the unit thickness is greater than the height factor, the equivalent torsional section modulus, ZT, is calculated to be 878.4 millimeters cubed per millimeter. Using the capacity reduction factor of 0.6 for bending, the diagonal bending moment capacity, MCD, is calculated to be 0.532 kilonewton meters. Using the horizontal and diagonal bending moment capacities, the total two-way bending capacity of the wall is calculated to be 2.12 kPa, which is greater than the design loading of 1.5 kPa. Therefore, the wall is okay for the given design loading. Here is a design chart from our TBA 04 manual, which can be found on our TBA website. To read this graph, anything below the curve chosen is deemed okay for use. Here, a 2.4 meter long wall using standard 110mm thick bricks 
is okay for a given design loading of 1.5 kPa. Note that the design height and length is half its actual value. The association has also curated a design manual that provides information on the design requirements for two-way bending. It contains a lot of useful information on design construction requirements, and I highly urge you guys to check it out. If you have any other questions regarding two-way bending design, please don't hesitate to contact the association, and we will be more than happy to help you guys out. The association also offers a wide range of free resources available to the public, such as technical manuals, research papers, and case studies. The association also has a technical hotline where we can answer any of your brick or block related inquiries. Should you have any questions about the design and construction of brick or blocks, please feel free to give us a call on the technical hotline. This concludes the last part of War Design for Bending. Thank you for your time and we hope you enjoyed today's presentation.